What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm ecstatic, and I am so thrilled and cannot wait for the month of April. The month of April is going to be great for the sport of boxing. We have Guillermo Rigondeau versus Nonito Doner. Zab Judah versus Danny Garcia that was postponed and is rescheduled. Canelo versus Austin Trout. And I believe Amir Khan versus Diaz is also taking place. And I know I probably missed some, but I mean, that's pretty action packed. And then to follow it up, you have Mayweather, Guerrero, and May. And then you also have Lamont Peterson versus Lucas Matisse in May. I'm really, really looking forward to the next two months of boxing. I can't express it enough. I did want to take some time in this video to talk about the 140 pound um, elimination tournament that Golden Boy is throwing. I got some new information that I was just reading, so I wanted to spread the knowledge and give some quick insight to some of the matchups. Um, I did a prediction on Garcia versus Zab Judah. Again, it's a 50 50 fight. Stylistically, Judah should give Garcia a lot of problems. Um, in a nutshell, I see Garcia weathering that storm and pulling away from the fight because not to just agree with Angel Garcia but Zab Judah has proven time and time and time again that sometimes he loses um, composure after the fourth or fifth round and he kind of lets the fight get away from him he looked excellent in his last fight but that was against Paris um, not somebody who's oh well, actually Paris was undefeated but I think Danny Garcia is on a little bit um, more of a run in terms of the amount of exposure he's getting and the amount of love he's getting through boxing magazine. He was just in Ring Magazine, him and his father. They had an article on him. Um, I just think Garcia has a little bit more momentum and is not going to be anxious to lose that. Not to say Paris was anxious to lose it, but I just think um, Garcia has a little bit more. So I see him beating Garcia, but again, stylistically, um, Zab can give Garcia a lot of problems based on how the two fight. I'll put my prediction video in the video responses so you can watch that um, get a little bit more insight as far as Lucas Matisse versus Lamont Peterson um, some of the comments I read are very pro Matisse and that's fine because I like Matisse a lot but I also like Peterson in terms of his ability um, the negative I think the black cloud over Peterson is the whole testosterone people think he's a cheater and that kind of thing so I'm not even really here to speak on that but as far as the actual matchup moving on because in the sport of boxing plenty of people um have gotten caught fernando vargas shane mosley margarito um orlando salido and i'm not saying i condone it but at the same time i'm a boxing fan i don't condone cheating um i'm an advocate if they want to do testing or olympic style testing i'm all for all of that but at some point it's, it is what it is you know what i mean um there's nothing I can really do to prevent it. I mean, if the Nevada State Boxing Commission or whatever commission is licensing these fighters, I'm not going to not watch Lamont Peterson versus Lucas Matisse when stylistically it seems like hell of a match. So without spending too much time on PEDS, I think the matchup is a lot more even than some people are giving credit. Some people are making it like uh, Lucas Matisse is just going to walk him down and walk through him, which could happen. Anything can happen in the sport of boxing, but I see it as being a far more competitive bout with Peterson and Matisse. Um, I, and again, I like Matisse a lot. I don't think he gets enough credit for his level of patience. He's not only a power puncher, but he also exercises a whole hell of a lot of patience. And that's rare in people who are heavy handed. Um, if you look at another Argentinian tough power puncher Marcos Maidana look at his early fights like the fight with Amir Khan um he got dropped by a good body shot in round one and then later on he gave Khan severe problems and almost got Khan out of there but I think he punched himself out and he didn't really stay composed and stay focused and he was like throwing some like lunging shots and missing whereas I see another Argentinian fighter Lucas Matisse who shows a lot more reserve and patience and i don't really see him punching himself out to the same degree if you watch the loose again fight um matisse he really had to work to get him out of there then he was also in there with a the veteran umberto soto and the same thing it was a competitive fight i think matisse was besting soto but at the same time soto was giving him a good run for his money and um, landing some significant shots himself 
it just happens that Matisse's was more damaging and both of those fights ended in a TKO, but he actually had to work for those wins. It wasn't like the Mike Dallas Jr. where he just knocked the dude out with one clean shot in the first round. So um, I don't think Matisse gets enough credit for his actual boxing ability. A lot of people just refer to the power, but he actually um, does a lot of good things in there. And one thing that I'm really impressed, him being such a, a devastating power puncher, is his level of patience in that ring. Um, and he commits to the body, which is great. Sometimes you get people with power and they more or less headhunt. So, I really like Lucas Matisse. I like Lamont Peterson a lot. This guy is really durable. Um, he doesn't really have any quit in him to fight Victor Ortiz, who is a who's a big um, big kid, and get knocked down, get back up, and fight back to a draw. I mean, that says something significant about your heart. Um, we all know his backstory: living on the streets, homeless. This guy's come from the bottom, started from the bottom. Now we're at. Sorry. I just had to do that. But anyway, he's really the true definition of that. Started from the bottom, worked his way up. So you got to give him credit. And I don't agree with some of the comments that are just saying that Matisse is just going to um, annihilate him. I don't see that. I see it being a close competitive fight. Um, Lamont Peterson, I don't know if you've ever been to a barbecue, but Lamont Peterson's like when you get the plate of food and you're at the barbecue and you're just trying to eat and there's flies or gnats that keep circling you and then you swat and then you try to get them away from your plate, and then the fly or gnat just keeps coming back. That's what Lamont Peterson is in the world of boxing. He's he's like a pest, and he won't stop stalking unless you physically make him stop. But um, he showed that in the Miracom fight and the Kendall Hunt, uh, the Kendall Holt fight. He looked a little bit rusty, maybe the first round or two, and then he got it together and kept coming forward. And Kendall Holt is a devastating punching puncher himself. So, Lamont Peterson, um, he's very durable. He's the type to get knocked down and improve. Like, oh, shit. Like, that's a reality check. And then get his kick his shit into gear and um, keep pushing forward. So, I'm really interested for that matchup. Um, Amir Khan did have some things to say regarding the 140-pound tournament. I reported on this earlier, but Amir Khan is saying his, his stance he said, Golden Boy said they're going to do a mini tournament. It's going to be between Garcia, Judah, the winner fights the winner of Matisse Peterson. At the end of the year, the winner fights me. The reason they fight me at the end is because I can't fight in the middle because I have Ramadan. I'm going to be fasting. It's a religious month for me. So I'm going to take that time off in there. When you take time off fasting for a month, you need another month to recover from that. Hopefully we'll know by the end of the year who the best 140 pound fighter is. And that is going to be between the five of us. So that's what Amir Khan's saying. Um, initially, I said in my video that I think he's the the prize at the very end. And I still believe this, even though he said it's because of Ramadan. Um, that probably plays a part in it. But I also think Golden Boy has him at the end just because out of all the 140-pound fighters mentioned in the tournament, he has the largest, most significant fan base. And he has a whole different demographic being a fighter from the UK, from Bolton, England. So Ramadan, I'm sure it does have some some um, reason in him being the last fighter in the elimination tournament. Obviously, it's his religious be belief he's not going to fight and fight the caliber of fighters that are in this tournament at his weakest or at any disadvantage. So um, he also said he has to get past Diaz, which is a dangerous test for him. Either way, I'm really looking forward to this tournament. I'm really looking forward to the months to come in boxing. Let me know who you think is going to be victorious in the 140-pound tournament. Um, who do you think has the goods? Who is going to get crushed? That kind of thing. As always, hate, comment, or subscribe. Until next video, it's Ego signing off.